Hey everyone, just like most of you, I've dived head deep into Star Wars recently. Whether it's watching Clone Wars or Rebels or playing Fallen Order, my life's been sort of consumed. And since Jedi have been on my mind as of recent, let's do my top 10 favorite Jedi of all time. Now, before number 10, just a few notes. Uh, this is just my opinion, so if you have a different list, please leave it in the comments. I'm genuinely interested on what your top 10 is. One thing, this list isn't based on strength, just personal favorites. So Anakin doesn't have to be at the top. You can include any person that was at some point a Jedi. So, like Count Dooku or Revan does count. All Jedi ranks are included, even if it's a youngling. Both canon and legends can be included, and at the end of this list, I will have an honorable mentions, which I would highly recommend to stick around for. And lastly, of course, spoilers, so leave if you don't want Rebels or Clone Wars spoiled. Alright, let's get into it. Starting at number 10 is a Jedi from the Rebels series, Kanan Jarrus or Caleb Doom. Trained by Depa Baliba, Caleb born 33 BBY managed to survive Order 66 through the sacrifice of his master. Although only trained to the rank of Padawan, Caleb later became a mentor to Ezra Bridger. So why is Caleb number 10? Well, originally he wasn't even on this list. Throughout Rebels, although a great fighter against stormtroopers or other weak enemies, when it came to lightsaber combat, he was really often lackluster. When it came to his use of the Force, he was often, again, immature and rash. This, of course, due to his unfinished training, but as far as a Jedi, it's hard to say he was anything other than average. He is number 10 though, so why did I put him on here? What changed my mind? Well, Caleb is on the list due to his father-like role to Ezra, his loyalty to his crew, and his ultimate sacrifice of his life for his family. When it comes to Jedi, Caleb by far has one of the most developed stories and one of the best deaths. And because of this, I really couldn't leave him off the list. Alright, and at number 9, our first original series Jedi is Mace Windu. Mace Windu was a Jedi Master and Council member during the Galactic Republic. When it comes to unique Jedi, Master Windu is as unique as it really gets. His signature purple lightsaber, distinct fighting style with Form 7 Vapad, and his absolute skill in combat. Only bested by Master Yoda, Windu was by far the best duelist in the Jedi Order. This is seen in his iconic duel with Sidious. As Jedi Masters fell around him in seconds, Windu held his ground and even managed to beat Sidious. But he was of course stopped by Anakin. He's on this list for his uniqueness, but he's only 9 for a couple of reasons, but mainly for one large reason. His warrior mentality often blinded him when being a Jedi. Many say Anakin's fall could have been prevented, and one of the biggest culprits is Windu. Mace is the opposite of Caleb Doom. All fight, with no love. Probably a surprise to many of you, Luke Skywalker comes in at number 8. Son of Anakin and Padme, Luke was undoubtedly one of the greatest Jedi to ever live. His highs are high, but his lows are super low. Let's start with the positives. His high natural skill with the Force. Only starting training in his teenage years, Luke still managed to step up to Darth Vader and later in his life became one of the wisest Jedi that ever lived. The lows for me personally go really low though. In my mind, he's kind of chalked up to be a generic main character. Often rash and block-headed, Luke was never a compelling Jedi to me. Compared to other Jedi, he's a whiny brat. Whether going to Tashi Station to pick up power converters, but I was going into Tashi Station to pick up some power converters, or throwing away a lightsaber like a toy, he's an incredibly strong Jedi. But in my mind, he only takes number eight. At number seven, another surprise to most of you, Obi Wan Kenobi. Hello there. Trained by Qui Gon and the ultimate master of Form Three, Sorisu, Kenobi is the embodiment of being a Jedi. Kenobi's loyalty to the Order is almost unrivaled. Although sometimes clouded because of this loyalty, this is a quality I highly respect. Kenobi sacrificed everything for the Order, including his life and his lover, Duchess Satine. When you picture a Jedi, you think of Obi-Wan. His battles against Darth Maul and his adventures during the Clone Wars are some of the greatest moments in the history of Star Wars. Kenobi had one fatal flaw, though. His loyalty lied in the wrong place. His loyalty sided with the Jedi Order and not the Living Force. Kenobi got caught up in war and politics and failed to see the scars in Anakin's life. 
Kenobi is iconic, but in my mind, he's more of a Jedi soldier than a peacekeeper. At number six, we have our little green friend, and no, not the one drinking the soup. Yoda comes from an unknown species and served as a Jedi Grand Master. When it comes to dueling and forest usage, he's unmatched. Only rivaled by Mace Windu, Yoda with his small stature and age is deceiving. Using Form 4 Otaru, Yoda could best three Jedi Masters at once and makes it look easy. Yoda is by far my favorite duelist to watch. His connection to the Force was incredible, and he's trained the likes of Count Dooku and Luke Skywalker. Yoda has done just about anything a Jedi could do, except of course stop the destruction of the Order, which why he's only at number 6. Yoda single-handedly could have prevented the rise of the Emperor Palpatine and stopped the fall of Anakin. When it comes to the wisest of all Jedi, he seemingly gets fooled quite easily. Not bashing on him too hard, Palpatine had a genius that almost no other Jedi could have predicted. Yoda as a character is a masterpiece. He's funny, he's original, he's wise, and he's powerful. Yoda is the grandpa of the Star Wars universe. Wise beyond comprehension, but often stuck in the past. At number 5 is undoubtedly the best thing to come out of the Clone Wars, Ahsoka Tano. A Togruta discovered by Plo Koon and the Padawan of Anakin Skywalker, Ahsoka is the perfect Jedi Knight. She was strong standing up to Ventress and Maul, caring when it comes to her master Anakin, but most importantly wise beyond her years when it came to her take on the galaxy as a whole. Ahsoka was only one of a couple Jedi who saw the flaws in the Jedi Order and ended up leaving it. Ahsoka saw the turn the Order was taking and realized they were straying away from what a Jedi was meant to be. I'm not going to gush any more about her, but in her old age, in my mind, she has the potential to be one of the wisest Jedi that ever lived. Sadly though, her later years are relatively unknown. With the finale of Rebels, we know she's on the search for Ezra, but that's about it. She's by far one of the most developed characters, and a lot of people have a really good connection with her, including me. Hopefully we'll see a lot more of her in the future, because she's by far one of the greatest things that's come out of Star Wars. Coming in at number 4 is by far my most controversial opinion, is Rebels' Ezra Bridger. Born on Empire Day and a cunning thief in his youth, Ezra is eventually picked up by the Rebels crew and is trained by none other than number 10 Caleb Doom. Often seen as an undisciplined child, many don't see the full scope of Ezra's life. Let's take a look at some of his feats. As a Padawan, he quickly picked up lightsaber dueling. Although covered by his master, Ezra fought many Inquisitors and managed to live, which was not done by many. His connection to the Force and other creatures like the Pergil is something also very incredible. Now let's not lie to ourselves, yes, he was nowhere near Prodigy, and no, he wasn't anywhere near the power of anyone like Anakin. But this isn't a power ranking. By far the greatest event in my mind, though, is his meeting with Palpatine. Palpatine offered the broken Ezra paradise, his parents and a normal life which he longed for, and Ezra refused. This might not look like much, but this little action shows wisdom beyond countless other Jedi. Remember, he was barely a Padawan, and he managed to stray away from the dark side, something Anakin, the Chosen One, couldn't even do. The simple fact he denied the dark side, which just like Anakin he had a natural affinity to, is something huge that many overlook. Ezra was average, but he was a great friend, a great leader, a wise Jedi even in his wild youth, and an incredible strategic mind. Hate on him all you want, but he freed his home planet and he did his service as a Jedi. Coming in on the top three now, it's getting a little spicy, so let's start with our number three, our hometown slippery boy, Kit Fisto. Master Fisto was a Nautilin Jedi Master during the last years of the Galactic Republic. Although not noted for anything special, Fisto is by far one of the most unique and interesting Jedi. Three events in my mind took him to my top three. The first was during the Battle of Geonosis where he was first shown to have incredible durability. The second and my personal favorite is his duel with General Grievous. One of the best fights in the Clone Wars series, Kit Fisto held his own against the Jedi killing machine and even defeated him. Kit Fisto, in my opinion, was one of only three or four Jedi that could truly defeat Grievous. The third was the battle against Palpatine. Many look at the battle and see a squid that was killed in about three seconds and laugh. 
But looking deep into it, you can see just how powerful Kit Fisto was. 99% of Jedi would fall to Palpatine in mere seconds. When Palpatine lunged at the Masters using Force Scream, everyone except Kit Fisto and Mace Windu fell. This already shows he's a league above other Jedi. The fact that Kit Fisto wasn't stunned by one of the most powerful Sith Lords to ever live really shows just how incredibly strong he was. He did eventually fall to Palpatine, but his skill can't be ignored. Let's also take a look at some of the things that made him unique and such a fun Jedi to watch. Starting with his lightsaber form, Form 1, Shi Cho, Kit was in my opinion the overall best practitioner of Form 1. Form 1 was the most basic and ancient form, and often replaced by the other forms once a Jedi became skilled enough. Form 1 focused on fighting multiple targets and didn't have as much emphasis on one-on-one -on -one lightsaber fighting, which again shows how powerful he was against Darth Sidious. Form 1 is the easiest to learn, but also the hardest to completely master, which Kit Fisto did. His lightsaber was also very special. Fisto's lightsaber held two crystals that allowed the blade to operate underwater, which I think is extremely cool. Probably one of my favorite lightsabers of all time. His close relationship with Ayla Sakura and his dedication to the Jedi Order places him in my top three Jedi of all time. Coming in at number two is someone you're very familiar with, the one and only Anakin Skywalker. Not much has to be said about Anakin, his story is widely known and his exploits are legendary. A Jedi Knight, not a Master, a General, a Sith, and ultimately, once again, a Jedi. Undoubtedly, Anakin Skywalker had the highest potential of any Jedi that ever lived. He was born out of the Force, on Tatooine, and trained by Obi-Wan Kenobi. Anakin had a troubling childhood which eventually led him to a dark path but his time as Jedi is unmatched. A boy genius who built C-3PO, a prodigy star pilot, and a strategic mastermind, Anakin was ahead of his age by decades. His adventures could make this video a couple hours long, so I'll keep this entry really, really short. Anakin was the strongest natural force user to ever live. Coming in at number one is my undisputed favorite Jedi of all time, Qui-Gon Jinn. Looking at Qui-Gon, he's an ordinary human male. His combat skills are mediocre, but he shines brighter than any other Jedi in one aspect. His dedication to the living force. Qui-Gon, in my opinion, was the only true Jedi of his time. While Master Yoda and the others were clouded by darkness and were seemingly feeling around in the dark for the right path, Qui-Gon could see clear as day and could see the Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker. Unlike his Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi, Qui-Gon's dedication lied solely to the Living Force, not the Jedi Order. He denied his seat on the Council and many times in his life strayed from the Jedi Order to follow the true calling of a Jedi. The crazy part is, finding the Chosen One Anakin Skywalker was only his second greatest feat. The greatest was the discovery of becoming a Force Ghost. Jin was the first practitioner of this and paved the way for Jedi like Yoda to learn this ability. Jin's training to become a Force Ghost led him to discover the two sides of the Force, the Living Force, channeled by the energies of all living beings, and the Cosmic Force, which it fed into. These two bind the galaxy together. Jedi of this time were always trying to focus on understanding the future while Jin lived in the moment. Qui-Gon was not like any other Jedi, his mentality and the way he lived his life was something unique. He did things no other Jedi could do and was the only Jedi truly connected to the Force. Because of this, he takes my top spot. Alright, so there's my top 10 Jedi of all time, but stick around because let's get to some honorable mentions. So let's start out with a couple honorable mentions that in my opinion are super 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 cool Jedi but I personally have no connection to, so I couldn't put him on this list. So we have Quinlan Voss, Plo Koon, Shock T, Ayla Sakura, Kid Adi Mundi, and Revan. Now a couple of oddballs kind of thrown in the list. Pong Krell, he had a really cool fighting style and was really, really strong, but ultimately was not a Jedi in the end, so I couldn't put him on this list. Another one is Galen Merrick. Only reason I didn't put him on this list because he was originally number 10. He wasn't technically a Jedi. He was never trained as a Jedi, so it felt wrong putting him on this list. Another one, along with Galen Merrick, is Rom Koda. 
The reason I like him, especially in the Unleashed games, was the fact that he only fought with real soldiers, not clones. This was something really unique, and I do like that about him, but not enough to put him on this list. We have Kazdan Paratus, once again, from the Unleashed series. Cool Jedi, but had such a small role, can't put him on the list. And lastly, Cal Kestis, obviously from the new Fallen Order games. I do like him, and I want to put him on here, but... There are many games to come up ahead for him, and I don't want to put him on this list prematurely. His story isn't fleshed out, and he one, he one day might be on the top 10, but for now, he is just not developed yet. So there's a couple of honorable mentions. If you guys have any other ones that you think I missed that should be in the top 10, that at least should be in the honorable mentions, especially a lot of like the really, really old ones, because I haven't looked too much into the like Old Republic Jedi, so let me know. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Have a great day.